I don't always say, but well, gang, we got another mystery at our hands. Yay! You might want to lock yourselves in the basement, ladies and gentlemen. Or for this one specifically, you might want to come out of your basements. Because you see, today we're checking out this episode of Joe Rogan where he's talking about aliens living in world's deepest oceans. Get it? You might want to actually come out of your deepest uh, basements here, buckos. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you're brand new. We upload every single day. Roll it. Take it away, Joe. Take it Take away, brother. The compelling. There's two. Well, don't they think aliens could live in the ocean? I mean, yes. that's how much. That was Jeremy Corbell was talking yeah, about yeah. that the other day. That they, um, you know, it's hard, it's hard to say like what kind of information he's getting, how accurate it is. But they're basically saying, think about the movie Abyss, where the aliens lived underwater. He was like, that's probably what's going on. Yeah. Mm. There's some sort of alien base underwater or some meat. Yeah, I, I've, like, we've heard a lot of people, actually, high-ranking people mention that. And we've seen footage as well of the UFOs coming out of water. Plausible. Place where that's where they hide. That's where they go to be undetected. Do you think you're going to see it in your lifetime? Bigfoot or aliens? Aliens. Like a... Uh, you know where it's like, oh, like we have to like talk to them now. We have well, to like interact yeah. with them. There are, yeah. there's video that is impossible to ignore. There's some things that are impossible to ignore. And then there's eyewitness testimonies of people who are yeah. rock solid, totally dependable, like fighter pilots yeah. who have seen some things. Like um, the best examples, this guy, Commander David Fravor, who was off the coast of San Diego in 2004. And this is corroborated by multiple points of data. They uh, had this... Um, this uh, Yeah, he'd done a podcast with him as well. But insane to think about that he saw in 2004, revealed it, I believe. Uh, Pentagon leaked those videos. Uh, not necessarily those videos, but David Fravor came out right after they revealed some leaked videos and confirmed that the videos are real. I believe are around 2017, 2018. And Commander David, uh, David Fravor came right after that. Not sure when exactly he did podcast with Joe. But insane to think about, he spotted that thing to uh, that tic tac ufo all the way back in 2004 and we're now sitting in 2024 perhaps you're watching this uh, in 2025 or something like that i don't know man maybe even 2050 and, and still like let's just say 20 years later we haven't even seen any like quote unquote talking with aliens uh and being on video or us uh, being able to talk with aliens no nah, there's none of that this tracking system that tracks things above Earth's atmosphere, and they found this thing went from above 60,000 feet above sea level to 50 feet above sea level in less than a second. They have no idea how it's doing this. They have, they have no idea. There's no method of propulsion that's visible. They followed this thing. They locked onto it. It blocked their radar. It blocked their tracking systems, rather. And then it jetted off at an impossible rate of speed. And then the Nimitz... Uh, relocated this thing at their cat point. The cat point is where the fighter pilots, when they're doing this uh, be, huh? test, they're doing this uh, exercise, they were supposed to meet at this very specific point. Yeah. And that's where this thing had gone. Like this thing had read their their manifest and knew, like, or read their or their plans and knew where they were going. What's wild? Mm. That, that is way more compelling to me than Bigfoot. The Bigfoot thing is just fun, but the alien thing yeah. is fun and likely. There's something going on. And so something going on, absolutely. And the, 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 the topic is about aliens living in world's deepest oceans. How many of you actually heard that story of where there were Russian divers underwater and they saw like a couple bunch of beings that were eight, nine feet tall, right? Yeah, you're probably hearing eight, nine feet tall aliens, right? Uh, I'm hearing that a lot as well. You know, last year, Las Vegas thing happens. Something crashed in somebody's backyard and they say they're seeing like 10 feet tall aliens, uh, right? 10 feet tall aliens in Miami Mall or something like that. 70, 80 cops car shows up, right? I don't believe in that Miami Mall situation. I think something happened, absolutely. And they... Uh, they are hiding something absolutely but i don't think aliens showed up on in miami mall that part i don't believe in could be real could not be listen man i was not there <laughs> whatever right but of course i also was not there at the las vegas backyard situation that happened but that is more likely to believe because even a year later the guy still remains shook uh, that's how it feels like and he still is sticking with the idea of hey he saw something and he's staying true to that he's saying that yeah we saw the beings we saw what we saw and we know what we saw so I, I, I believe in that but but here's the thing though uh, yeah that's the story of the aliens and underwater right so Russian diver sees 
beings underwater, eight, nine feet tall, with like some sort of a suit on and helmets on as though they were using the helmets to breathe underwater you ever heard that story yeah right it reminds me of that and how many times we have seen videos of ufos coming out of water and going inside water uh there was this uh report men uh occurred not long ago where they said that ufos were caught at least one ufo was caught doing 500 knots underwater now to put that in perspective that is insane okay 500 knots underwater sheesh man that's 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 insane that's like unheard of right because uh, it was completely unaffected by the water the weight of the water and the, the physics right it, it's not normal so it, it's insane absolutely insane. i go back and forth sometimes i think it maybe it's some sort of government drone that's like so sophisticated and they're they, you know they it's totally top secret and if we ever go to war with china that's when they're going to break it out and then sometimes i think what they are is something that's monitoring us and making sure we don't blow ourselves up making sure that we we make this journey from territorial apes with thermonuclear weapons into some sort of an advanced Perhaps. intergalactic society Perhaps. and that there's a very crucial moment where the instincts of these tribal people which is all of us all human beings are these tribal territorial people where you have to keep them from sabotaging any possible future progress by blowing themselves up, by killing each other, by what if know, we talk to them the and then they and then, then when you say that they go, yeah, that was it. Is that easy? <laughs> like not that easy, but like you just go, is that it? They go, yeah, that's about it. We're yeah. trying to yeah, keep you guys from blowing it. yourselves up. This is like, yeah. but maybe that's like the natural thing that you see, like when civilizations advance like there's a very precarious moment where like they have the capability of blowing themselves up but the reason and the logic to not do it but they also have these instincts to control resources and take over territories they still have those instincts but they have to bypass that they have to figure out how to, and so that's when aliens start circling and and just keeping an eye on us yeah perhaps this perhaps. is that that's the primary I mean, that's what you would hope right instead of like them attacking us Yes, because then so I think if they were gonna attack us, they would have already done it. Yeah, like if or yeah, this is this is one of those ideas that is brought up like many many times, right? If they wanted to attack us, if they wanted to like uh, take over the planet, they would have done already by now. Makes sense though, but what if it's like them plotting it right now and getting ready to invade? You never know, right? You never know, or it's one of those things. It's like yeah, one uh, one. one one alien doesn't get his banana and then it's like okay i'm mad now i'm pulling out my ray gun and i'm actually going invading this planet earth okay let me go find my boo boo real quick right it, it could be that as well maybe they're plotting it right now to eventually do it i don't think so but you always gotta explore different possibilities too now for sure this topic is very very fascinating that's probably is the primarily reason primary reason you're watching this video right but Here's the thing though, when are we gonna know? Are we ever gonna know the truth? Is it gonna happen in our lifetime? Is it not? I guess it's, let's find if out. If they really could do all those things, they could probably take out our power grid pretty easy. Apparently, they're, they the, the stories are that they're able to shut down nuclear launches nuclear and launches, nuclear yeah. facilities, and that they do that, and they, they, they hover over military bases, and that they just shut everything down just to let you know, hey bitch, you know, I could That's just wild. flip yeah. that switch, so yeah. don't get too fucking squirrely out That's there. That's so crazy. Just, it's a technology to to basically make it harder for radars to see you. You know, and that's the whole thing. You know, if you look at uh, okay, so we got cut. Uh, the video got cut to this part. Uh, okay, so this is Commander David Fravor, the guy that claimed that he, he's a fighter jet, uh, fighter jet guy. He's a pilot. He's a pi pilot uh, in Navy. Used to be, I guess, maybe still is, but probably used to be. So, to the, in, back in 2004, he did chase a UFO, and uh, yeah, crazy. You know, airplanes that are nose on uh, are harder to see than airplanes at the sides. Kind of like. Think of a barn door. If you're looking at the whole barn door, it's really mm -hmm. easy to see. If I turn the barn door sideways where it's really thin, it's going to be a lot harder for you to see it. Got it. So that's it. that's the easiest, most basic way to look at this. So you keep going. You can play again. And you can look. The, the airplane is still sitting at 20,000 feet. It's doing 250 knots. He's going to go through different modes and try and lock it. And uh, it's just kind of sitting, and all of a sudden... Eh. And we were talking about a UFO doing 500 knots, but underwater. <laughs> and we don't even know that if that was the fastest. Probably not the fastest. 
as the video goes on, I think it's a minute and a half long. See, it's going to try and reacquire. It recenters the pod, so it's it's slowly drifting to the left. The 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 Hornet is still going the same heading, it's just kind of hanging out, and they're just filming this thing. And then when they get close, it's going to zing off the left hand side. When you see it on a full, because this, you know, you think digital, you'd be able to get a one for one copy. Unlike you know, when you copy your album to a cassette, you know, you lose a little quality. Well, you still do in digital world, and they're yeah. off. It goes to the left. And that's pretty fast to leave that field of view. On the when we we have big monitors that we look at these when they come back, so we're looking at the original tapes. So play the end of that again, please, Jamie. Jamie, pull, so play when that it's again, taking Jamie. off, how fast when when it just sort of like leaves the field of view and takes off to the left, how fast is that going? Uh, I would say pretty fast. It's an estimate. If we had ranging, you know, you could obviously do the triangle and go, hey, because we mm -hmm. know how big the field of view is. But for something to leave the field of view that fast with the pod just staring, is pretty fast. I mean, it, it just it's like out of here Damn. like nothing yeah. that we have no because we can't i don't care what airplane is so let's just use the f-22 raptor that's probably one of the it's, it's probably the best airplane in the world right now okay. performance wise um it can't take off like that it, especially if it's a yeah. hover I mean, you're, you're talking something that's just sitting in space in the wind and then it just all of a sudden accelerates airplanes don't work that way and it's not leaving any exhaust plume no notice there's none and when Play you go back again, to the Jamie, at the end even in the eye. Yeah, it's like uh, I, uh, humans be like, we got eyes on you. Target acquired. Target locked. Okay, now we're following you. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, aliens be like, nah, biatch, we moving out the uh, And it just takes off and goes out of field. Truly, truly wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, what, what, what was the speed? What was the speed? I, I don't think anybody knows. IR, you don't. Yeah, see, see, there's IR zoomed in, and there's no. You would see a plume if that was an airplane. It's creepy how it takes off. Yeah. With active jamming, it's intelligently controlled. There's no rotors. There's no plumes. There's no exhaust. There's no tail fin. There's no uh, tail number. This thing goes from a standstill, takes off. It's a propulsion system we don't have in our inventory, and no other nation does. That's how it's understood by the government. Now, that that's so if the fastest plane on Earth was trying to do that same maneuver, this system would be able to track it? Um, yeah, well, yeah, it would stay with it until it got to the, the limits of the pod, you know, mm -hmm. as far as looking to the left. But right. oh, yeah. And, you know, the radar would see it. I mean, when you get, you get close enough, you're going to, you know, you, everything becomes visible because you get burned through with radar and how, how radars actually work. This one is, you know, <laughs> you, you tell me, but it, it, this was it, performance beyond. I mean, it's like when we saw it disappear when it flew in front of my nose and i'm talking something I'm, I'm within a half mile of it looking at it and it gets in front of me and just disappears so take we'll just go to something that everyone knows is fast let's just say sr-71 that's doing mach 3 oh, shit. you oh, know the visibility is 50 miles but 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 tom cruise did mach 10 in that in that movie man <laughs> i'm forgetting that name i'm forgetting that name uh, what was the movie what was the movie y you know what i'm what movie i'm talking about right like he did that movie Amazing movie, by the way. Uh, but he did mock, mock 10 in that. So even at 35 miles a minute, I'm going to be able to see this thing turn into a... Top Gun Maverick. A little dot as it goes off into the horizon for a, probably a minute. The thing that we saw disappeared in a second. Crazy, Just gone. man. Crazy. And that's from two different angles. Remember, the other airplane's 8,000 feet above me because we, we get close to it at about 12,000 feet. So the other airplane's above me looking down, and when it disappeared, I said, do you guys see it? And they said, no, it's gone. Yeah, and if these are, if, and if they are able to do something like that in the sky, like going from 5,000 feet all the way up to 50,000, 80,000 feet like that, I wonder if they can do that underwater too. And if they are, that that's insane, right? Uh, and our oceans are, our ocean is an alien planet in itself, because you always hear this number, 90%, 80%, 70% is unexplored. Okay, well, let's start exploring that then, bro. That, let's start exploring that. But nah, we don't want to explore that. It's understandable, I guess, because uh, exploring space and exploring the sea are uh, two different things, right? Uh, I, I guess exploring the ocean is a lot more difficult and a lot more, I guess, cost-effective. But but they always say like it's also is very expensive to explore explore it, uh, the the space as well. So I, I suppose. Mathematically speaking, I, I should say logically speaking, 
I don't think it would be too expensive to explore the ocean in comparison to the space, but I guess the challenge of all that water being on top of you, it, it's, uh, I gotta bring that up, you know that Titanic thing? That the, the four billionaires that went to see the wreckage of Titanic, uh, of course, like, they, they chose a wrong company, of course they did, because the company was using parts that were not good, not up to par, uh, they were really on that cost cutting and that that's i mean shouldn't have done that like you're talking about four billionaires right you guys should have done your research a little bit going that deep but hey listen it's it, it, it now it happened it happened what i mean by that we i'm talking about that implosion that happened uh, and they died underwater on their way to see the wreckage of titanic so going that deep of course you got all that water on top of you with all that weight it's insane, right? So I understand, like, you cannot necessarily start exploring all the ocean. Totally makes sense. But I guess it is time that... We have the technology, though. We just got a 10 exit. I guess somebody eventually gonna come in that is passionate about ocean exploring, ocean floor exploring. And it's gonna just 10x. Because we have the technology to go that deep. We just need to 10x that technology. What I mean by this is that make it a little bit better. Enhance it and make more of it and also make it so it's more like let, let's just say how in the very beginning somebody made the planes and then you ma you mainstreamed it you made it better and better and mainstreamed it now it's like anybody can travel to anywhere on the planet uh, that quick so we, we need the same treatment with that too so we can go underwater explore it and you never know what if we see like the the ufo sitting there just chilling yeah crazy but guys this is the last jorgen podcast that discussion that we did click on this video on the screen i'm sure you're gonna lo love this one check it out if you already seen it then check out the video on the left